everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a pastry chef with a severe sweet tooth. And I'm here to show you how to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoyed these recipes, please consider hitting the subscribe button down there, giving the video a thumbs up, leaving me a comment, sharing with all your friends and family. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts almost every Saturday. Today, I'm bringing you an easy keto maple pecan sticky bun. This is a recipe my mom has had since we were little kids. I asked her where she got it. She doesn't even remember. But all I remember is growing up every Christmas morning, we had this recipe and I figured out how to make it keto. So you can hopefully enjoy it on your Christmas morning. So let's get started. So like I said, this is gonna be an easy recipe. <laughs> easier than my keto cinnamon roll recipe, but it's still a little bit more difficult just because we have to make our biscuits. My mom used to use Pillsbury Homestyle Country Biscuits. So basically we just have to make that dough. I will eventually make like a traditional maple pecan sticky bun, but right now I just want what I had when I was a little kid and I made a batch last night and they were so good. So we're starting with a batch of cinnamon roll dough minus the yeast and inulin. And I did half cup of heavy cream and a half cup of a low carb milk because we're dipping these in butter and cinnamon sugar. So we don't need that extra fat. I tried this recipe last night with a quarter cup of sweetener. I didn't think it was quite enough. So I upped it to a third of a cup or 62 grams. We got to whip our four eggs in with that sweetener. Always crack into something different just so you don't get any shells in there. I'm going to go through less detail here on this dough recipe because I made such a lengthy cinnamon roll recipe and everything's still going to be in the blog post. So I'll just mention a couple things here and there that make this recipe different than my cinnamon roll dough. So we're just going to beat that until the sweetener is dissolved. While the eggs are whipping, you can get a bunch of stuff done. We're also gonna get some allulose going on the stove because we need to make our maple syrup, which when I do more testing on this, I'll have a specific just maple syrup video. But I did one test last night and I made it a little too thick and it wasn't quite sweet enough. Today is also kind of a little experiment, just the tweaks that I have to make from my recipe I made yesterday. So I'm making more today than I did yesterday. I made only three quarters of a cup. I'm gonna make two cups because I want some extra. We just need a little bit of water to moisten up the sweetener a little bit. You can add as much or as little water as you want. You just don't want the sweetener to burn, but all you're doing is boiling it to evaporate the water. So however much more water you put in is how extra long it's gonna to take to boil out. I'm gonna keep it on a medium low heat and just keep an eye on it for now while we get our dry ingredients ready. Hey guys, jumping in here with a little foreshadowing from the future. This amount of dough did not work for my vision of my Christmas mornings as a kid. It totally didn't work. So instead of refilming the entire dough making process, I made a dough already that I just cut this recipe down by a quarter. So please follow the measurements on the screen here. They will also be in the description box below along with in the blog post that will have very detailed information, tips, tricks, and everything that's in this video, plus some extras. So definitely check those out. But the entire process is the same, so let's get on with it. So like I said, this is a simplified version. I never even thought to myself when I was a kid, this isn't a traditional maple pecan sticky bun. I looked up traditional sticky bun recipes. The syrup that you put down in the bottom wasn't maple syrup. It was like butter and cream and a bunch of other things, like basically making a caramel sauce. I'm keeping it more simple than a regular maple pecan sticky bun. Probably almost good to go to something. Yep. I took it a little bit too far yesterday. Once it just starts turning like kind of like a yellowish color, this was two cups of allulose here, 320 grams. We're going to add a tablespoon of maple extract. It looks runny now, but when it cools down, it gets really thick. So I said I did it a little bit too long. So now it's 250, which is what I kind of was going for before I added it. 
And then because allulose isn't as sweet as regular sugar, we're gonna add some liquid stevia. This is kind of an estimation also, so I'll have to get back to you after I taste it. I'm gonna do one teaspoon. I'm gonna give this a taste after it cools down a little bit because it's gonna burn my mile. I tasted our maple syrup. And I think it's sweet enough, but I think it still needs more maple extract. So I'm gonna add another teaspoon. So hard because I haven't had maple syrup in so long. I think that tastes good though. So we're gonna go with that for the sticky buns. Now back to the dough. It doesn't feel grainy anymore. So we're gonna stream in our butter and milk mixture. Add your dry. Give it a scrape, mix it up real good. So what I'm gonna do to chill it is kind of make it into two logs, kind of like the packaging of the Pillsbury biscuits. And that way it should be easy to slice and dunk and put into the pan. Should be about 400 grams each, I think. This piece of plastic isn't gonna be big enough. Okay, so it'd probably be easier if you had a longer piece going this way. Hopefully it's not too stuck. Oh, nope, we oiled it, so it's good. So you go like that and try to even it out. Grab two ends, like that. So oh, chill it. It shouldn't take too long to chill down because we didn't use like warm, heavy cream and the butter, I didn't get super hot. I pulled it when it was like half melted. So it wasn't super hot going into the mixture. So that's basically all we want is that butter to kind of get it solidified a little bit so that we can slice it and dunk it. So we'll be back when that's chilled and we'll get our pan ready. Now she used a nine inch pan. I tried yesterday in an eight inch pan and it definitely was not enough room for all the sticky buns. So I thought I had a nine inch pan. I don't in the bakery and the ones upstairs are probably gluten fried. So I am using my spring form pan, but I would definitely use a nine inch round for this recipe. Surprise from the future, it's two days later and here to tell you do not use a spring form pan. All the syrup leaked out, a bunch of butter leaked out, it burnt, it was a mess, it was not good. So I ordered from Amazon nine inch cake pans because that is what we're gonna need. Even with this recipe cut down by a quarter, it's not gonna fit into an eight inch cake pan. Bought these from Amazon, only took one day to get here. Link will be down in the description box below. I can't attest to how good these are cause I just bought them, but they were pretty cheap. Two for like 10 bucks or something like that. We're gonna do this. I already made my dough, like I said. We're gonna get into the pan. My oven is preheated to 350. 375 I think is still gonna be too high to cook these all the way through and not get it too dark on the outside. So let's get to dunking and placing our sticky buns into this pan. Okay, so we gotta prepare our pan, some butter. Get it all in the corners. Now luckily I made that syrup and I had about half of it left. But see how it's gotten super thick? It's a little it took it a little bit too far. So that just means we took a little bit too much of the water out. So I got some hot water here. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in. Try to get it a little bit thinner. Because as this bakes, more water evaporates. We want it kind of syrupy. Might need to heat it up a little bit too. Then we'll throw it in the microwave for a couple of seconds to coat the bottom of our pan good. Now you don't want to cook that anymore, so just keep an eye on it. You just want to get it warmed up a little bit. That's just the water steaming. Well, I mentioned the Lacanto 
maple syrup earlier and it is really thin there are other sugar-free options on the market it all depends on what you want to fit in your macros for keto i know there's ones made with sucralose feel free to use any of those you want to whatever your favorite maple syrup is if you don't want to make it that looks good it looks more syrupy so let's pour it in our pan so it was about one cup of syrup when I figured it out. Just wanted to coat the bottom of the pan. So I cut the dough by a quarter, but I didn't cut everything by a quarter. So make sure you check out the blog posts and stuff. We got one cup of granular monk fruit erythritol blend. Any erythritol will work. Ocha sweet might work. Allulose probably will burn too fast. And then the one stick of butter melted. Let's get our dough out. So I made this two days ago. We're cutting this into eight. So cut it in half first. But this is always thicker than this. So do these a little bit thinner. One, two, three, four. Still a little bit too small. Try to even them up as much as you can. Why try to do that? It'll probably make it a little bit more even. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. Okay, I guess these are more the size of a Pillsbury biscuit. There, dunk into there. Make sure they're coated real good, and then put them like that. Don't want to keep them too long in there because it is warm butter. You don't want your dough softening too much. This pan is a little bit like short. I hope it's going to be okay for this. I should have asked my mom how she put them in the pan. I thought that was the way, but I probably should have double checked. Put them in the middle because he's a little small. Okay, next log of dough. That's good. I think this one's a little small, so we'll put him in the middle, I think. Fell down. If this doesn't work, I'm going to cut it down even more. Okay, that looks about right. I hope. Let's bake them and see. I'll insert a picture here of what the end product looked like last time. It was just too full. It took over 55 minutes and it still was raw in the middle. So I'm hoping this one isn't going to take more than 35 minutes, but we're going to throw it in for 15, turn it and see what happens. Okay, it's been 33 minutes. I don't recommend this pan, just so you know. So I was worried about the size being too short and I was right. A bunch of the syrup boiled over and burnt in my oven. So I don't know how much is left, but as soon as it comes out of the oven, we gotta flip it. So let's flip it out. It is a little bit gooey in the middle, but I think it's pretty done. Ready? Ooh. Ooh. It looks like my mom's sticky buns. Christmas morning. I like it didn't stick at all. That's good. It looks delicious. Now it needs to cool for a little while. And then we're going to try one. Time to try one of these guys. Don't mind if it's a little smoky in here. So I definitely suggest putting it onto a sheet tray just in case your pan is similar to mine. Because it, the allulose is burnt in the bottom of my oven and smoked and yeah, not fun. So there's a tip for you. They look delicious. Let's pull one apart. They're still warm. They look so good. Ooh, they're really soft, hot. Bet they're gonna taste good. They're dripping with butter and syrup. Mm -mm. Just like my cinnamon rolls. I'm sure these are gonna be delicious straight out of the oven. Unlike a lot of keto baked goods.
pretty darn delicious. I definitely suggest making a little extra syrup and putting that on top. Only one net carb per sticky bun. So you could have maybe two or three on Christmas morning and you don't have to go off track for the holiday season. This brings me back right to childhood. So good. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I hope you enjoy this easy, as easy as a keto pastry recipe can be, maple pecan sticky bun. It's definitely a cheat way to do it, but it is so delicious and you can make the dough the day before, dunk it and bake it the day of. It'll be super delicious. So let me know if you guys end up making this for your Christmas morning or Christmas Eve morning or New Year's Eve or any of that stuff or just for regular breakfast because it is delicious. Let me know in the comments below what your traditional Christmas breakfast is. I'd love to know. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full recipe in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks to those who are already subscribed. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys.